Welcome to the abandoned marina, a truly wild spot that I came across whilst pike fishing the canal during the winter. Since then I've been curious to find out what lives in here, if anything. It just has a feel to the place. I can't describe it more than that. There isn't actually as much space as I remember last time. It's going to be a bit interesting trying to work out where my bed's going to go. I've been desperate to get out and spend a night under the stars for a few weeks now. It's painful being stuck inside watching spring happen without me. So the plan was to take two days to chill out, eat some good food and interrogate this untouched stretch of water in the hopes of meeting one of its inhabitants. I began by walking around the place, trying to find gaps in the overgrown weed and looking for signs of active fish. That's something feeding on the bottom, which considering when I first got here I thought the place was void of all life, is um, quite exciting. I've actually seen some fish blow out of the surface as well, be it pike or carp, I, I'm not sure, but there's definitely something to fish for. I think I've got something of a plan. I've definitely seen some larger fish jumping out, which to be honest I'm completely shocked. I didn't think anything would live in here. The, bottom under the bridge where the canal meets this has been blocked for as long as I've known this stretch, possibly about a year. So the fact that there is something larger living in here, it's kind of cool, but I don't know what it is yet. I need to keep watching the water, but I don't want to be just sat here <laughs> doing nothing. So I'm going to get a float out, see if I can grab some of the smaller bits that I've seen swimming around. And that was a huge load of bubbles that just came up down there. There's something big in here. There is something big in here. <laughs> there are loads of bubbles over in that area, but it might be a bit risky to cast out there. We might do it anyway. Let's give it a go. No, straight in the duckweed. <laughs> That was good, that was better. I'm gonna leave that for a little bit, I think. Three, two, one, now. Now. So float fishing didn't really work, and I don't really understand why, as there was feeding fish, I found the depth and I had maggots trickling in constantly. So I'm gonna try something a little bit different. I've got literally a pellet on a hook and a big split shot. And I'm gonna go and chuck it on those feeding fish and see what happens. Well, that didn't work either. But now I'm really tired. I know it sounds stupid, but getting all the different angles to make the film and fishing, it's not the one, man. I need to hire a me. If there's a, or clone myself. If I could clone myself, that'd be kind of cool. I think the marina's a lot deeper than I first thought. I don't know that for sure. Actually, I know what I can do. I'm gonna put the 360 camera under and find out. Pretty much exactly what I thought. It is quite beautiful down there. That's incredible footage. Um, but fishing this is going to be impossible. Equipped with a better understanding of what was going on underwater, I decided to switch back to float fishing, this time with a couple of maggots suspended just barely beneath the surface. I was determined to get a bite from something, anything. But with the sunlight fading and a stomach that was becoming increasingly hungry, I could leave the float in place knowing it wouldn't snag and get to cooking some dinner. Hygiene. Oh. 
kind of getting a little bit nervous that this video isn't going to have a fish in it. <laughs> Which, we've all watched those videos, they exist. I didn't particularly want to put one out myself, or a train's coming by. I think I'm going to fish some boilies close in tonight. I'm going to put it on a very, very, very small carp rig and see what happens. I might as well. I might as well be fishing whilst I'm sleeping. And um, is that another train coming? Uh, yeah, I, I might get a bite in the night. I might get lucky. I doubt it. And I do not have a clue how I'm going to fish for this pike tomorrow. But this is tasty, so. Well, I'm not feeling all that confident in what I've just done. <laughs> I don't know if I'm on the weed, in the weed, under the weed, but at least I'm fishing whilst I'm asleep and there's always a chance, I suppose. I look way too smart to be on the bank. I look like I should have an office job and have a 401k or whatever the Americans have. Um, something big enough to lift a two ounce lead decided to have a go last night. I wasn't expecting that, but I think my rig was too short. So this morning I tied up a much longer one and cast that out instead. But that aside, I think I might have a plan. So this morning I'm actually gonna fish from the other side. There's a clear area, I think, where the marina joins the canal, where the water's constantly blowing in. And I have actually seen the pike jump out there a couple of times. So whereas with lure fishing, normally you're constantly moving and making sure your lure never goes through the same bit of water twice, I'm actually gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna repeatedly cast in that one tiny bit of water that I think I can fish that's free of weed and hopefully wait until the pike comes along and land it. However, I don't think catching this pike is going to be the end of this story. I'm definitely coming back, basically, is what I'm trying to say. I'm going to buy one of those weed rake things and clear a couple of spots, put a bit of bait on them, and then come back and fish it. I think that way I'll stand a better chance of catching whatever it is that I've seen that's been feeding so hard. If that's a video that you want to see, you should probably click that subscribe button. Just saying. So I'm gonna start with just a very simple roach. This one's old now, you can see how battered it is. <laughs> but it's done me well in the past, so I don't know, let's see how it goes. Fish on. Oh! Oh no!
I can't believe that just happened. 